The starting lineups for the Hornets will be Abby Wager, number two. Ashley Santos, number 12. Abby Wager with the steal to start the game off. And the basket. Well, she's off to a good start. You uh, can't put that ball near her on the dribble. She'll take it away from her with those arms. Kayla Vine, number 23. Brooke Barraby, number 33. And Sarah Dooling, number 35. Hornets and a man-to-man. -man. For the Tigers, who are, as I said, 0-7. It is Jalen Fernandez, number 10. Isabella Russell, number 12. Wow, nice Tori shot. DeRosa, number 13. Sonia Fernandez, number 23. And Christy Gorman, number 30. And those two Fernandez sisters are definitely the Tigers' best players, but they've also missed some games in COVID protocol. And the drive down the court by Christy Gorman goes for two points. So it is a 2-2 game with seven minutes left to go. Nice drive for Christy Gorman. Tigers look like they're in a 2-3. Oh, I don't know, it's a little. Wager underneath gets the pass from Santos and converts. So, uh, so uh, Abby Wager is off to a great start today. It's a senior's final home game, but the sophomore so far is leading them, Mark, with three shots, two, two made field goals. She walked. Jalen Fernandez is called for a travel, and it will be Hornet ball. For those of you who didn't get a chance to see it, and it was uh, on uh, a live but non-announced uh, stream the other day, the Hornets had a great game against Notre Dame Hingham, uh, winning 63-60 to in overtime after trailing by probably about 15 points at one point in that game. Chummy little Jim and two officials that wanted to call the game as if they were playing dainty ball. Yeah. But the Hornets pers persevered, and I'll tell you some of the details of that as we go forward. But right now... We're watching this one as Baraby will take the uh, hook but doesn't get it, but Dooling almost had the rebound. It goes down to Sonia Fernandez, and here come the Tigers. Oh, Wager and Anna Darlington played huge roles in that game, and there'll be a travel oh. called on Jalen Fernandez. Great defensive play, Brooke Baruby. She held her ground, put her arms straight up. Couldn't draw, the, couldn't, uh, draw her charge, but Draws the travel call. Casey Viking and uh, and uh, Allie Prentice come in for the Hornets. Looks like a 3-2 zone defense the Tigers are playing. Wager back to Vine. Prentice in his, her usual shooting spot, but opts to keep the ball going out at the perimeter. 12 seconds on the shot clock and a whistle. And I think it may have been an inadvertent whistle. It was an inadvertent whistle. Well, you know, again, we've seen them all year. You're holding on to those things in your hand, and there's a button you have to yeah. push, and sometimes you just hit the wrong button, as they say. So Vine will take the three-pointer from the right corner. It goes off the rim, and rebounded, though, by Dueling. Dueling tries to save the ball inbounds, but that cannot, and it will be taunting ball. 4-2, to two, Hornets, 5.24 left to go. And in about 10 minutes over in Taunton, the quest of Matty Bowen for his 1,000th career point will continue. He is, uh, I believe, was it 43 Three points, points away? Yep. 43 points away. They're playing the Taunton Tigers over there this afternoon, and of course, they will play them here tomorrow night. Abby Wager with the steal, and she will go in alone and convert the layup. So she has all six of the Hornet points so far, with 5.05 left to go in the opening quarter. Hornets are looking like they're going to get off to a good start here, and defense is creating offense. She's such a heady defensive player. I thought she got away with a foul right there, though. Fernandez's shot was blocked by Wager, but it will come out to the other Fernandez. No good. The rebound by Maddie McChenzie. No good. And she does get the second conversion attempt. So Maddie McChenzie scores for Taunton. It's 6-4 to four, Mansfield. Underneath, Viking alone, but she is... Mark, I think that was uh, Tori DeRosa. Was it? All yeah. Right. I thought I saw 15 there, but you may be correct. Yeah, she's Tori DeRosa. All righty. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, I thought McChenzie was taller, come to think of it, as I saw oh, their game. Nice shot. Shot from the outside by Sonia Fernandez, and it's now a 7-6 to six Taunton lead all of a sudden. 4.09 left to go in the opening quarter. This is either a 1-2-2 two, two zone or a 3-2. Prentice will take the three from the right side. Oh. No good. Gets the rebound. It's uh, Abby Wagers, and she'll start the offense over again. 
Kayla Vine up top. Wager inside. That's where you Dooley want Dooley gets it out. Now Prentice will travel as she <laughs> looked for a better shot. She, she had her three, but she uh, did not opt to take it. Yep. And now we're going to get a King Phillip style uh, substitution know. here by the Hornets. We're getting five new players. Yes. She walked. She did walk. A little high pick and roll. So that is Maddie Machenzi right there, yes. number 15. No, that's Tori DeRosa, Matt. Uh, 15 is uh, Machenzi, I believe. DeRosa's 13, I believe. Uh-oh. But anyway. I have a different. I must have given you something wrong. I'll, uh, I'll check on that when I go back later. And I did not even see who got that basket, Tom. <laughs> I didn't either. All right, so. Sorry, folks. That's all right. Double dribble there. Okay, I see. I see. I took that took that roster off of uh, HockamockSports.com, so I'll blame them for the time being. Okay. That is Maddie Machenzi, number twenty-two. I'm pretty sure that's her. Uh oh, we got a discrepancy on. Yeah, I'll have to check uh, their book again. Yeah, probably. Uh, we'll get an opportunity here. So uh, sorry for the interruption, folks. It is nine to six, Taunton with two fifty-two left to go. Darlington gives it off to Salisbury. Salisbury loses the ball underneath, and here comes Taunton. That's Lexi Haywood, number 33. She will take the three-pointer. No good. Rebound fought for underneath. 22 travels, and that is, uh, I believe that is Machenzi. If I have, uh, let me see what I have on the other uh, now, I have Machenzi is 21, so that is not even Sailor correct. Sailor Depina. All right, yeah, Machenzi is 21, though. I know that much now. So I can get that straightened out in my book. Barabee underneath to Kara Santos. No good. And the uh, Tigers come away with the rebound. That is Braley McDonald with that rebound. The drive to Machenzi is no good. Hornets a little sloppy so far, Hope Mark. And Darlington will not convert. That's off the rim. Well, the Hornets uh, probably in need of a timeout at some point. If they yeah, don't we're get... close to a timeout bucket. There's Anna Darlington. Darlington throws in the three, and she was hot in her last game. She had uh, three threes in the game against Notre Dame Academy, including a huge one in overtime that gave the Hornets an insurmountable lead. Tigers battling for that ball <laughs> in the cage. Now here's Machenzi through the outside shot and she nails it, a three-pointer. Maddie Machenzi, 12 to nine. Tigers in the lead. Wow. And the streaking Kara Santos From Ashley in. Santos. 104 left to go, it's 12 to 11, Taunton. The underclassmen are doing all the scoring so far for the Hornets here today. There's a steal, Barabee. Barabee has it now and will give it off to Olivia Salisbury. Hornets working at the perimeter. Ooh, Kara can make that shot. Santos. Gives it back off to her sister. Barabee at the foul line now. Salisbury for the three. Swish. Nice shot. And the Hornets regain the lead, 14 to 12, with 23 seconds left to go. Another underclassman with the three for the Hornets. Always nice to see the future coming yes. to bear. Callie Mello has the ball for Taunton. Loses it off her foot. It will stay... Taunton Ball apparently contacted a Hornet in the process. Seven Hit. seconds to score here for the Tigers. Braley McDonald gets the ball back. It is now the Hornets ball. Darlington has it. She is hit at the buzzer. No call, but the end of the quarter. So after a 
slightly confusing quarter on our part because I cannot get my roster correct. It is 14 to 12. The Mansfield Hornets in the lead. So, so far, Thomas, a sloppy, uh, sloppy game so far, Mark. Yes, it has been a little bit. Uh, when it's a uh, little bit in the Sunday lull here. <laughs> but you know what? As you made note of, the girls are, the younger girls are really coming to play in this one so far today. Yeah, the Hornets going to lose a lot of height next year, but the they're going to be a quicker team, and they're going to have to definitely play different. They're going to have to play more of a pressing, pushing the ball. We will have tomorrow night's game here on live stream on Mansfield Cable Access as the Taunton boys, who went into today's game unbeaten, and they will, uh, as the Hornets are, well, that outcome may be different tomorrow. We'll see what the, what the case may be. But this game, at least, we know will be at 6.15 tomorrow evening here at the Albertini. Hornets have the ball to start the second period. The three-pointer by Vine, no good. Rebounded by Sonia Fernandez. A steal. Underneath the steal. By Kayla Vine, we'll get it up to Wager. Wager will put the lay in, in the basket. And Abby Wager has eight points in this contest. As Taunton will bring the ball up. Into Fernan to, uh, oh. Fernandez, goes with the baby hook around and in. Great move so on a, a little drop step in the low post. Sonia, Sonia. Fernandez. That's Ball back. eludes. Will that be? That will be out of bounds. It would have been a backcourt if she had touched it anyway. I'm surprised the Hornets aren't pressing this in this game. They're starting a little lethargic. Is probably the best word I can come up with. Maybe if they did a little press, a little full court man, they might get themselves a little more into this game. There's another. A three-pointer by Ariana Richards. It could also be maybe a little bit of charity given the records, but I think it's yeah. time to call that off a little bit. Tigers came out wanting to play today. Good for them. you got to get that ball to the middle. There's where the pressure is. And the rebound no good by Viking. Viking fights and still keeps that rebound. Gets it back out. Wager to Vine. Vine has it slapped away. And a block by Wager. Nice. And it will be Taunton ball. Boy, what a great block. And the ref was right there. It was all ball. Abby just waits for you to, that offensive player to show that ball. Quick hands, quick hands, long arms, great defender. Taunton inbounds the ball now. 22 seconds left on the shot clock. 6.07 left in the quarter. Abby Wager on the steal. Another she one. gets it up ahead to Kayla Vine. Now Great back. pass. Passing back and forth. And Abby Wager forces a timeout by interim coach Jenna Olam over on the Taunton sideline. So with 5.59 left to go, it is Hornets 18, Taunton 17. Wager with three steals. First into double figures with 10. Very active defensively. So in yesterday's game, and I was really impressed by this. Again, you're in a very tiny gym over at uh, uh, Notre Dame. I, I have been there a few times in my life. It is uh, not as bad as Font Bonds, but <laughs> it's pretty close. Um, the Hornets were down 23-13 after the first quarter. And wow. they were still trailing by four at halftime. The, the, the fun part about this is that seven different Hornets had reached the scoring total. So it's not as if they were, you know, they were gradually building back. Late in the third quarter, Anna Darlington hit a three-pointer to make it 42-42. But uh, Notre Dame took the lead going into the fourth quarter by two points. At the buzzer, Abby Wager hit a very acrobatic putback from the right of the, well, actually from the left of the basket underneath. 
to send the game into overtime. And uh, it was a, a, quite an exciting game, really, when you get down Ooh. to it. I mean, the, the, um, it must have been. Darlington nailing another three-pointer, put Mansfield up, by, as I said before, by five at, late in the overtime, and they could not. Wager had 13, and Darlington had a career-high 12 in that game. Hornets. Ashley Santos for the three, no good. Rebound comes to Darlington. Gives it back to Salisbury. Back out to Darlington. Good passing Now girls. to Baraby. Baraby for the two, no good. Rebound by Salisbury, but it is controlled by Fernandez. And the other Fernandez, the younger one, Jalen, will come up with the ball, give it up. And, and I am in the process of looking up the Taunton roster. <laughs> so... Kara Santos with that uh, rebound, the pass just a little bit too far ahead. I can live with Kara Santos doing that. Looking for the outlet pass, looking to spring for the two on one, just a little long of a pass. But I like the idea that she's looking for that outlet player and trying to push the ball. In the corner is Gorman. Gets it back out top. Jalen Fernandez will take it to the basket. Does not score on the rebound by Kara Santos. Here come the Hornets. See the head up. See she the head up. She saw her sister open, and her sister scores on the layup. Ashley Santos from Kara Santos. It is 20 to 17 Hornets. 4.38 left to go. Kara getting the rebound, getting her head up, and looking down the court. Just what you want. There's Ashley. Ashley looking up court. Oh, stolen. Another steal, and here comes Baraby. But the rebound is put in by Ashley Santos. Great follow-up, rebound and put back. Absolutely great follow-up. By follow the up. senior captain. Another steal by the Hornets. Here's Olivia Salisbury. She is going to pull it back out, take it onto the line. That'll be a two if it goes. It does not. The rebound is by Sonia Fernandez. The shot by Gorman goes over the basket, and Darlington will wall off a Taunton player and not allow it to be in her hands. It is Mansfield ball, and we have a significant <laughs> and full five. Lineup uh, change. Another line change here. I've been seeing this all year at the King Philip Warriors. Now we see it here. 22-17, 3.36 left to go in the first half. And yes, Tom, I have straightened out the roster finally. Oh, great. And I think it's what I gave you <laughs> oh, <laughs> originally. Great, great. Viking shot is no good. Rebound. Machenzi. Oh. Um, hey, Mark. Yeah. Are they, are they got somewhere to go here with no fouls called yet? Or I don't know. <laughs> there's, I don't, no, there's, no, there's no football on today. There's so. no fouls. I mean, I thought that was a, a definite hit. Wager will inbound. 30 seconds, a full cock. Up by Prentice, no good. And the rebound is by Jalen Fernandez. Gets it up to Isabella Russell, who I misidentified earlier, and I apologize for that. Lexi Haywood has the ball now. Out at the top. Wager, Freshman. Eyeing, Wager eyeing her. Now gives it off to Machenzi. Back to Russell. Eight seconds left to go on the shot clock. Russell will be blocked by Viking. The ball is on the floor. Viking and is tied up. Just as the, wow. and they're going to call the 30-second violation on that, even though I thought the tie-up whistle came before that. 2.46 left to go in this swiftly moving contest. Mark, have you ever seen a half without a foul call? <laughs> I haven't yet. I don't think I have. I've ever seen that. 22 to 17. Hornets have put up eight in this quarter. Prentice back over to Vine for the three. Vine is not able to hit those threes these days, but she's doing a lot of other good things out there. Loose ball. Taunton comes away with it. Isabella Russell will drive to the basket, have it taken away, and that is your first foul, Tom, right there. Okay. And that foul is on 
Sarah Dooling. That's her first and the first in the contest. <laughs> After 14, almost 14 minutes of play. So Russell will go to the line. Hits the first. What an arc on that shot. She's got some nice quickness, Isabella Russell. She took it strong. Drew the contact. And the second wow. one, again, another high arcing <laughs> shot for the uh, five foot three inch senior. 22 to 19. Oh. Almost a steal. Wager has it, now gives it back to Prentice. Prentice will take it into the lane. Ball is loose underneath. Dueling has it, though. Dribble. Dueling looking for help. Gets it from Viking. Viking puts the jumper in. About a 15-footer, maybe. And uh, her first points of the game. 154 left. It's 24-19 here in the first half. The Hornets up. Kayla Vine with the steal. Having to fend off a very physical <laughs> effort. <laughs> and finally called by Isabella Russell. Kayla's a tough kid. She can handle yeah, it. She is. She really is. So there is your first taunting foul in this contest, and it was a vivid one. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, Tom, I just wondered if what's, you know, the, uh, is the uh, buffet on over at Tavolino? <laughs> I don't know. Do they have a buffet at Tavolino? <laughs> I'll see I, you, I just, folks. I just thought of one <laughs> off the top of my head, but I'd lo really love to have their uh, veal salt and boca. It's delicious. Ashley Santos, they're swinging the ball around now. Darlington will take the three, no good. Rebounded by Baraby. Gets it back out to Salisbury. Now to Darlington for another three attempt. Uh, a little okay. bit of a line drive, no good, but it's rebounded by McChenzie of Taunton, and here come the Tigers. No hesitation by Anna. Callie Mello brings the ball up, now gives it off to Fernandez. That's Sonia Fernandez. McChenzie thinks about the three. Gives it off to Haywood. In the corner is Mello. She will bring it back around out. Eight seconds on the shot clock. The three-point attempt. No good by Haywood. Hornets rebound, and they're off to the races, but that pass is a little bit ahead. Saved from going out of bounds, but Taunton saved it. Ashley Santos kept it in bounds. Taunton recovers it. 45 seconds left to go in the first half. And the shot by Haywood. Oh. No good. She's Rebounded by Kara Santos. Salisbury, 28 seconds left to go. Underneath, Barabee, she will spin around, but foul. is fouled in the process. It was Kara Santos running hard down the center, down the lane. I think Brooke saw her just a hair late. She was coming hard, wide open down the middle of the lane. Fouls on Sela de Pina. And Baraby gets the first, her first point of the game. Six, eight, Dips and shoots, does not get that one. Sonia Fernandez comes down with the rebound. 20 seconds left, Taunton will have a chance for a last shot. She's just gonna go to the basket, I think. No, she stops, takes the turnaround jumper, no good. Rebounded by Barabee. She's knocked to the floor. No call. Ball ends up in the hands of McDonald. Slapped Great away. Play. Four seconds. Three, two. Underneath the pass from Salisbury to Santos for a basket to end the half. Well executed last possession. Strong finish of that half mark by the Hornets. So two quarters are in the books here. And it is 27 to 19. The Hornets lead the Taunton Tigers. Tom, that's the kind of basket you get that at the finish, and you got to feel good about that. Yeah, that was great job pushing the ball. Hornets are act, starting to get a lot more active on the defensive end, and it's and it's showing. They're getting the turnovers. They're pushing the ball. So uh, Hornets finished on a, a nine to two run. And they, did out, quarter. and they did outscore um, the Tigers 13 to seven in the period. Now my scoring for Taunton may be a bit off, Tom, so if you kept them, uh, you, yeah. can, you can give them and I'll give you the Hornets. 
I've got uh, Isabel Russell with four. Okay. I've got Tori DeRosa with two. Maddie Machenzi with three. Sonia Fernandez, five. Christy Gorman, two. Ariana Richards, three for a total of 19. I hope that adds and up it, is, it adds up right, and I knew where the, the incorrect basket on my part went because I was <laughs> fiddling around with the wrong numbers there. I guess, I guess I just copied down the wrong numbers. Everything I gave you in the uh, printouts was correct. Okay, good. So, uh, <laughs> and if we are wrong, we certainly apologize have, to the legion of Taunton fans that are maybe watching us. I have had so many games to cover lately, it's been driving me nuts. <laughs> but I, I believe me, I'm not complaining. I enjoy doing it. Now for the Hornets, Abby Wager has 10 points. Anna Darlington has three. Ashley Santos has six. Kara Santos has two. Olivia Salisbury has three. Brooke Baraby has one. And Casey Viking has two. And that should add up to 27. So, and I would say we are now 15 minutes into the boys game over in Taunton. And our best wishes, of course, go to the Hornets. Taunton. Yeah, really looking forward to see how the Taunton boys make out against the Hornets. Both teams undefeated. That is a battle for Hockamock League supremacy, supremacy right yeah. now. Uh, over here, the... Um, the Taunton Tigers had, a, a, again, one of those little coaching changes this year that won't be the same next year. Jenna Olam, the, one of the assistant coaches for Amy Siggins, took over uh, to start the season. Uh, Amy has a very young son, and uh, she was telling me, she actually stopped by before the game, mentioned that uh, with all the concerns about the pandemic right now, it was probably a good idea for her to, to opt out for this season. And indeed... With the issues that Taunton's had, of the no, numerous times that they have had to uh, uh, have postponements of games over there for COVID reasons, I think it was a smart move on her part. Uh, they were five and fifteen last year. They did not qualify for the postseason. And you might remember too, Amy Siggins came over from King Philip. King Phillip, yeah. So we are in, ready for the second half of play, and Taunton has possession to start. Already, the defense looks much more active for the Hornets. Drive by Jalen Fernandez is no good. Rebound, Viking has it. We'll try to uh, give it an outlet, but pass is too long and Isabella Russell comes away with it. Isabella Russell gives it inside to Fernandez. Off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Prentice. Oh, help Prentice us. is uh, almost triple team back there, so she does get the ball out. Numbers for Santos the Hornets. to Viking will turn around and put it in from Ashley Santos. And a quick whistle and a timeout. That's by the Taunton Tigers. That's a real early timeout bucket. But she must have seen something she didn't like right away. But the Hornets definitely have come out with an increased defensive intensity. 29 to 19. The Hornets this year have scored 616 points uh, for an average of 56 even. And they have allowed 559 for an average of 50.8. And, uh, of course, they do. Are, they are now 1-0 and in overtime from that uh, victory over Notre Dame Academy, who now call themselves the, um, oh, what were they? they um, uh, I think they might have been Auburn? the Cougars. I think they were the Cougars. They, they originally were the Aces. I remember back in the uh, 80s when uh, they would play in Division II in the tournament, and they would end up playing Foxborough seemingly all the time. And they used to call themselves the Aces, but now I believe they are the Cougars. Uh, they have it painted on their floor, and I'm just kind of blanking on it right now. But um, a great game in that one, certainly. And I don't, I, you don't want to even slightly minimize it. Uh, career high 12 by Anna Darlington, and she hit big baskets during that. So that was nice to see. The ongoing progression of Anna Darlington this year has been really fun to watch. No question. She has provided a spark to these Hornets in so many games. Defensively, moving that ball. She may be, you know, she's an excellent passer. Tori DeRosa gets it around to Gorman. Gorman out to Jalen Fernandez. Now Sonia has it. Ten seconds left to go in the shot clock. She'll make the drive. No good. Rebounded by Viking. Here come the Hornets. Is Abby Wager. Wager. Oh, oh it almost it hung oh. on the rim for half a second, but what a great little uh, attempt. Everything she got the was, pass. Yeah, everything Beautiful. was great about that. She, that was the only shot she had to come up on the other side of the rim. 
Great idea. Great pass. Just a hung there, shot. hung there, tantalizingly, yes. as I like to say. <laughs> sure did, Mark. Hornets will have the ball inbound. It's a new 30. Vine gets it in to Wager and then gets it back. Vine now looks inside for dueling, but she's in traffic. And the ball will go out and it will be off a of Hornet. And so it will be taunting ball with 6.42 left to go in the third quarter of play. It's 29 to 19. Oh, here's some full court pressure finally. The Hornets, a little full court man. There's a trap spot. Trap that, Sarah. DeRosa finally gets it across. Despite uh, fending off Vine, still has Vine to contend with. Now gets it into Gorman. Gorman will turn around, get it back out. Jalen Fernandez will take the drive. Partially wow. deflected, I think, by Viking. And it will go out of bounds off the Tigers. Hornet ball. Mark, we are definitely a let them play mode here. Look at yes, that. we are. <laughs> wow. There's no danger of anybody following out of this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kayla Vine brings it up for the Hornets, gives it to Prentice. Now over to Wager. Inside, back out to Viking for the short jumper, no good. Rebounded by Jalen Fernandez. Taunton has the ball. Three seconds, guys. Gorman will drive on... And they think they do call the. Th no, no they call she pushed foul. off. She did. She All got right, so is that on Gorman? Yes. That is a foul on Gorman. Yeah, she did not get it. She wasn't getting away with that. Ref was right there. She extended her left arm. If you extend that arm, they'll call that every time. <laughs> well, maybe not every time. To <laughs> see how Except few, for today. <laughs> seeing how few fouls we've seen today so far. It can't possibly be the first push off of the day. <laughs> In fact. There was some uh, over the back situations <laughs> it, as it, the ball was tied up by Baraby and it will be Hornet ball. 540 left to go. Against the zone defense, you want to get the ball to the foul line. And it takes some skill. You've got to fake one way pass, try to get that bounce pass in to Brook Baraby. That's what pushed the, puts pressure on the zone defense. It extended it to more like a one, two, two now. There it is, right there. There's the pressure. There, and there was a slap. <laughs> even wow. even, even Barabee doesn't know how that couldn't have been called. It was a quite audible slap. Wow. I'll, be, I'll be eager to listen to that one when we uh, see this game on television. I'll tell you, Isabel Russell, she is a <laughs> tough, hard-working kid. I'll tell you that. All right, Taunton has the ball. Tori DeRosa brings it up. And it skips through, and Kara Santos has it. And she has it knocked out of her grasp. It will be off her as the defensive effort came from Sonia Fernandez. It will be Taunton Ball with 5.10 left to go. I think Heather McPherson is beside herself a little bit there. She's that probably, she's, this is two games in a row that she has seemed yeah. very interesting officiating. Yeah. Let me just put it that way. That, that play just happened right in front of her. You know, she probably had the best view of all. But. I swear, Tom, in that Notre Dame game, I thought I was watching uh, 1970s oh, basketball. Oh, no, Mark, really? It was that bad. It was that bad. I, I just wished I could have gone through the television set and said to those guys, <laughs> girls can play basketball. Yeah. Believe me. Inside, Kara Santos is hit from behind. That will be a foul on number 35, Olivia Gannon. And the Hornets will have it. That's the second foul of this half. <laughs> 4.42 left to go in the third quarter. Ten-point lead by the Hornets. Salisbury gives it to Darlington. Now the ball is slapped away from Barabee, and Taunton has it. Lexi Haywood will bring it up for Taunton. Gives it off to Jalen Fernandez for the... Short jumper, it goes in. The first points for Taunton in this period. Wager back to Salisbury. Santos looking into Barabee. Barabee again hit from behind, nice but they never call drive. it. So Barabee just takes it to the basket and says, well, what, if they're not going to call it, I'm just going to score. That's a heck of a drive to very, the basket. Very, very strong drive by Brooke Barabee. The shot here by Haywood is no good. Goes out of bounds. Hornets will have it back. Four minutes left to go, 31 to 21. And again, a line change for the Hornets. Yeah. You 
you know. Yeah, this is very curious that the uh, officiating is taking this turn late in this season. Yep. I, I've heard that they're having trouble getting uh, enough officials to do a lot of the games because of pandemic opt-outs and so on and so forth. Inside, Viking will turn around, put the Power put up. the little baby hook up, and she scores. Can't stop her when she gets the receives the ball there. It's pivot and put it up. Six points for Casey Viking so far. 33-21 Hornets. Taunton doing a bit of a weave here. Fernandez will take it in. No good. Rebounded. And wow. a foul. The foul on Gannon's attempt of a shot. The first foul against the Hornets, and that will be on... He's calling that before the shot, Mark. Oh, heavens. Oh, my Lord. And was that on... Um, 35. Was, was that on Sarah Dooling? Sarah Dooling. It yep. is on Sarah Dooling. It, oh, no, it's on 23. It's on oh, Vine. They, they were yeah, late. I, thought that, I thought that was... Uh, I, Dooling was the previous foul for the Hornets. It's a pretty <laughs> safe bet, Mark. It's the first yep. on each... <laughs> Shot no good, and Wager comes down with the rebound on Haywood's attempt. Hornets putting a little steam in their step here to get it up the court. There it Viking is. Viking foul line jumper from Vine is Great good. Shot Casey. For you young players, watch Casey Viking. She has her hands up in a pass receiving position on the offensive end. That's what you want to do against the zone defense. Get your hands ready to receive. Jalen Fernandez tried to get it to Gannon, but Gannon was not ready for the pass. They call it target hands, and, and Casey is excellent at it. You always want to make yourself a, tar That's a target, right. especially That's right. when you're at the post. Don't play 5-3 don't play if you're 6-3. Right. <laughs> you know, not that Casey's 6-3, but I'm just saying, if you Here don't make yourself a target, you're Look minimizing. Look at her hands. There they are. Vi uh, Vine underneath, no good. Rebounded by uh, Machenzi. Jalen Fernandez will take the short jumper and a block oh. attempt. Looked like she got mostly ball, but they're going to call Abby Wager for that foul. And that will be her first foul. The referee had a good view of that. He, she must have got her with a little body. So Jalen Fernandez will go to the foul line for two shots. Gets the first. Hornets will substitute. I kind of like this. I mean, uh, Heather's giving her team yes. a lot of players a chance to get a lot of work today. It looks as if this will be, you know, this and tomorrow's game against Taunton will be the last ones for the year. I don't yeah. think they're adding on any more. Of course, I will announce the uh, added on game for the boys, too, after this free throw, which is missed, and the rebound by Kara Santos. The boys are adding Lowell Catholic here. Wednesday night, 6:30. Low Catholic is nine and one. There will not be, uh, they will not be a t an easy team. As the shot by Santos does not go, rebounded by Jalen Fernandez. Hopefully, Mark, the Hornets will be risking their undefeated season. <laughs> oh, nice and shot. The, and the shot, the lay-in is by Jalen. Jalen Fernandez. Fernandez. Hard, tough angle uh, lay-in too, as she managed to convert it. Barraby gives it off underneath, she but it'll walked. be a, a travel. Yes. Travel on Kara Santos. 134 left to go in the third quarter. It is 35-24. The Hornets in an 11-point lead. Extended man-to-man. -man. Now they're going to play a little bit of a press here. There's the trap point. Come and trap her, Ashley. Mello gets it across. Gives it off to Jalen Fernandez. The shot by Machenzi is way over the basket, and Darlington has the rebound. And here come the Hornets. Darlington up ahead. Oh, the pass. To Ashley Santos, no good. The rebound, Ariana Richards. <laughs> but she travels when she hits the ground. <laughs> oh. Okay. Whatever they whatever they say. Ashley Santos will inbound and gets the ball back immediately from a little runner is no good. Rebound. It's on the floor and it will go to Taunton. 
I'm not even going to try to explain it. <laughs> See, this is a great move by Heather. She's trying to change the tempo of this game, trying to create a little more action by full court, man-to-man. -man. Maybe the Hornets can get a few easy baskets. To be honest, this is the closest that Taunton has hung in to practically all of their games this year, so she probably would like to see a little bit more execution here. Up ahead, Ashley Santos will take that short jumper, no good, rebounded off of Barabee's hands, but it was knocked out, and so it will be Hornet ball. In this situation, Mark, the end of the season, I have no problem with the five on, five in, five out. She's trying to get all the seniors playing time. Santos gives it back to Salisbury for the three, no good, high bounce off the rim. Comes down to Darlington, she gets it back out to Salisbury. Inside pass, Santos to Santos. Now over on the corner to Darlington, no good. Forced that one up a little bit. Ball is on the floor, will be a tie up and it will be Mansfield ball. With 22.4 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Hornets have the ball and Olivia Salisbury has it out top. Now gives it to Darlington, gets it back. Kara Santos, quick pass over to her sister. Ashley, no good for the three. Rebounded by Tori DeRosa. Comes up to Machenzi. She will throw up the shot at the buzzer. Wow. No good. Nice effort. And thus, after three quarters, the Mansfield Hornets lead the Taunton Tigers 35 to 24. Now, the Tigers have been in a couple of games this year. They had a one point loss to Milford and then an eight point loss to Milford. Otherwise, some of the scores are not what you want to write home about, uh, including a. Uh, 59 to 10 loss at Franklin, and that it comes as no surprise. No. Everybody has been losing to Franklin this year, well, no matter how good you are. By the way, Tom, I don't know if you were aware of this, the uh, King Philip girls and Foxborough played yesterday, kind of their last games, although I guess King Philip is going to replay their one against Taunton that was postponed. But the uh, Foxborough girls won that 78 uh, to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm losing the score on it. it, it was, I think it was 78 to 62 or something to that effect. But in her final game for the Foxborough Warriors, uh, Caitlin Mollica scored a career high 35 points. Wow. She is such a treat to watch. Heading to Stonehill College next year. So if everything gets back to normal and we can go to these games, that will be a nice take to see uh, her, a uh, couple other friendly folks that we know over there at Stonehill. Megan Hill will probably, well, she's got another year, right? Eligibility because yep. of no, I think she is a senior, Mark. I think she, I, I think she has a year left. I'm yeah. not, I'm not actually right up on that right now, but so anyway. And Kayla Raymond actually from Oliver Ames, another great player. Yes. So here we go, the beginning of the fourth quarter in this one. Assuming this will be the last time we see the Hornets this year, the Hornet girls anyway. And uh, it's been fun to watch the progress they've made. Oh, Heather McPherson has done an incredible job in her first year. Love the way they play. They, they work really hard. Been they, a pleasure to watch. They are seven and four. They're four and four in the Kelly Rex going into this one. So they have a good chance to finish on the high side in the Kelly Rex uh, standings. You know, you take Franklin out, Mark, and they're seven and two. Yeah. And uh, Franklin's beaten everybody, like you said, so. Oh, Kayla Vine. Kayla Vine takes the ball away, but throws it up and will get a foul call. Now, the question is, will they call it as a shooting foul? I was wondering what they're going to see. <laughs> it was on Gorman. I love watching Heather McPherson over there. Look at that. I wish I didn't have the headphones on so I could hear her. <laughs> Kayla Vine goes to the line, misses the first. Surprisingly, she's not on the scoreboard yet. Yeah, it's it is. It is surprising. And she gets the second one. 7.32 left. It's 36 to 24. We have a timeout, I believe. We do have a timeout called for by the Taunton Tigers. So... I've already given you the score and the time. So what else do we want to talk about, Tom? Well, the <laughs> Taunton's only scored five points in this half. Yep. 
what time was that boys game in Taunton starting? Today, it was supposed Mark? to start at 3.30. 3.30. So they're a half hour into it right now. And the way these games are sped up with the shorter halftime, I wouldn't be surprised if they are in the second half by now. Well, you know, no matter what happens in the, in the boys game at Taunton today, tomorrow night, tomorrow night is really for first place. Yep. And if Kel you know, yep. Regardless of who wins, somebody's going to gonna end up tied or somebody's going to be the undefeated Rex, Kelly Rex champion. Now, what I'm hoping, uh, again, I don't want anybody to turn away from our broadcast right now, but they, it, they might be showing that over on Taunton. I don't think they have announcers for those games. It's one of those um, yeah. wall-mounted cameras, I think. But I'm hoping they archive it because I would like to see that. Yes. But as you, as of course, we will have here tomorrow night the the second game between the Tigers and the Hornets, and that could be for a milestone. It could be all sorts of exciting issues about that one. So the Hornets have the ball here with 7:27 left to go in the game. Kayla Vine has it. Imagine in a non-COVID season, Mark what this gym would look like tomorrow night. Oh, it would be crazy. Somebody going for 1,000 points and the league championship. And what a power drive by Abby Wager on that one. That puts her at 12 points for the contest. Just carried her defender in with her. Sonia Fernandez has the ball taken away. The ball goes out of bounds off of uh, Sarah Dooling, I believe. Great work underneath by Sarah Dooling. That's a tough matchup with her against uh, Sonia Fernandez in the low post. It's a physical battle. Inbound pass goes to Sonia Fernandez. She will have dueling on her. Covers her very well. She has to give the ball up to Isabella Russell. Russell loses the ball as she goes around and goes out of bounds. And I guess they're going to say, well, I don't know what happened. So <laughs> they're going to give it back to Taunton. Seven seconds on the shot clock. That was the least committed <laughs> pressing of a whistle button that I've ever heard. <laughs> All right. The inbounds pass goes to Gorman. Gorman she now loses the ball off her knees, and that will be a Mansfield ball. 14-point lead for the Hornets here with 6.42 left to play. Defense, folks, is hard work, and the Hornets are willing to do it. Abby Wager has the ball, and she will take a course to the basket, but she is hit on the way in, and that is, I believe, on uh, Russell. Yes, it is. It will be Mansfield ball. That's actually 14 fouls on Taunton in this half. Vine will try to take it in, loses control of the ball. Tori DeRosa comes up with it. She will go to the basket. No good. Casey Viking on the rebound. Casey Viking now loses the control of it, but she gets it back and passes it up ahead to Kayla Vine for the three. No good. Rebound by Dueling, and it will there will be a foul, I or is it just out of bounds? I think Braley McDonald. All right, let's see. Yes, I think you're right, Tom. That guy's going to add more batteries into that uh, <laughs> whistle. I cannot hear it at all. It's the end of a season to <laughs> tone. <laughs> well, hopefully these guys can go back to blowing a regular whistle next year. I mean, we all hope that things will get normal again. Ball is on the floor. It'll be a tie-up, and it'll possession arrow goes to Mansfield. 6.08 left to go. 38-24. to 24. Mansfield leading. Wager gets it to Vine. Vine will set things up. And the Casey Vine, Casey Viking with her hands in a catch position. That's what you want. Those, there they are. Sarah Dooling. There it is. Gets it into Viking. Viking turns around, pushes off a little oh. bit, gets the shot off, no good. Rebound is on the floor and comes up into the hands of Tori DeRosa, who hits it, puts up a head for Gorman, and Gorman will score on the fast break layup. Very well executed by the Tigers. Excellent fast break. Underneath, oh. no good. Sarah Dooling's pa uh, attempt, just a little bit rushed maybe. All right, Gorman's gonna try again. She's gonna go up over Viking and draws the foul from her in the effort. So that will be the first foul on Casey Viking in this game.
Christy Gorman, a five foot nine senior forward. This is the first. The Fernandez sisters missed some time, I think. Mark. Yes, they Didn't did. They yes, they did. They missed about one one both games. Both of them were out for one game, and then I think one of them missed the second in a row of that. And Christ, uh, Christy Gorman gets that one. So it should be 38-27, and it is. Darlington over to Salisbury. Salisbury tries to get underneath the Santos, but Barabee comes away with it. Now it is in the hands of Kara Santos. She'll, she'll put up and call for a travel. It will be Taunton Ball with 4.58 left to go. And the whole length of the court to travel. Jalen Fernandez gives it off to Lexi Haywood. Back to Fernandez. Now into her sister, Sonia. Sonia for the scoop shot. No good. Rebounded by Brooke Baraby. 4.38 left to go. Hornets up by 11. Salisbury and Darlington passing it back between each other, looking for the shot. Now it's to Santos, inside to Santos. And it will go off the off, out of bounds, off of a Taunton Tiger, so it will be the Hornets ball. Ooh. Thank you. Salisbury now up top, gives it to Darlington. Baraby to Salisbury for the three. No good. Rebounded by Haywood. Taunton on the attack. Taunton, of course, black uniforms, orange and white. That's a nice, that was a nice Sonia pass. Sonia Fernandez. Sonia Fernandez. Mark, there's some talent on this group of Taunton. Oh, there Tigers. is. There, there really is. No, there is. There's no question about it. Again, a disruptive season, though, and that tends yeah. to uh, that tends to eat away at whatever you're trying to build. Barabee. Gives it back off to Darlington. There now to Salisbury. Salisbury will take the foul line jumper and hit it. <laughs> Olivia Salisbury with five points in the contest. Jumper by Fernandez, no good. Rebounded by Ooh, Anna Darlington. Got an injury. And we do have a player down on this side of the court, but she's back up. That was Callie Mello, who's... And now they're going to, now that she's up in the forecourt, they're going to stop the... That was a classy move by Heather McPherson, yep. calling a timeout. She did call the timeout yep. to let them attend to that. 3.11 left to go. It's 40-29. to 29. The Hornets in a commanding lead here in this game. Well, Mark, what do you think of this Hornet team for next year? It's time to take a, a look at the returning players. Well, uh, obviously, right at the top of the, I would say Abby Wager is at the top of that list yes. because uh, she has a lot of skills, and they are just getting better and better as the time time goes on. And as long as her concentration level is high, then she then as you noticed in the last few games, some of the layups she was missing earlier yep. in the season, she's not missing them now. And as with maturity, and hopefully with a, and the other thing we have to consider, Tom, is with the. Uh, Lack of AAU ball this year and lack of the summer leagues. Yeah. Uh, all of those things were disruptive influences for this season. So with if everything can get kicked back in again, yeah. I'd yeah. feel good about that. I certainly like what I've seen about uh, Casey Viking. She'll be, uh, well, actually, she, no, she's, she's a senior. senior. Okay. But it's Cara Santos Cara as Santos, a freshman. Cara Santos has had uh, made some impressions. Yeah. And, of course, uh, the two guards, Darlington and... Uh, Salisbury. They're going to be a little nice. small. Yes, they will. Uh, 2.51 left to go. And a whistle. Uh, you need Almost a, a whistle. Yeah, he needs yeah. new batteries. <laughs> that, 
That was right in front of us, Tom, and it barely chirped. I know. I could, you know even with the headphones. You know, we do have headphones on, but 2.49 to go. So I believe that foul was on Ashley Santos there. And so as a result, Tigers will inbound the ball. And they go quickly into Machenzi underneath. No good. Rebound fought for and a tie-up. Took them a while to get to it, but Sarah Dooling and Machenzi on the tie-up. It will be Taunton Ball, I believe. And Taunton will inbound the ball. Out to Sonia Fernandez. And the shot by DeRosa is no good. Fernandez battles for the rebound, and she's fouled on the way up. I think that's on Dueling, I think. Or is that on uh, Fernandez? Is it there? Oh, know. it's on Dueling, I believe. Yep. It is on Sarah, Sarah Dueling, and that's her second. And so... The senior guard forward, and these, this girl's been a three-year starter for Taunton. Sonia Fernandez goes to the foul line, gets the first. Sonia's got eight. 40 to 30, it's still, it's still. <laughs> it's a game. It is 40 to 31, it's closer than it should be, but I suppose, Again, too, I, I like the fact that uh, Heather McPherson is using this as a teaching game, too. Yes. You can see that, that she's getting different units in there and doing everything she can to get uh, get not just prepared for tomorrow, another game tomorrow, but thinking in terms of what the future may hold, I think. And You know, we could sit here and say that some couple of the Mansfield girls should play more than others. I certainly feel that way, but it's a pretty equal roster. It really is. Uh, at least you know two from every position, really, and I can see to a you know I can see a certain aspect of her going five and five. I don't think that'll be the case next year when the Hornets losing all, you know a lot of senior players, a lot of minutes are leaving. I'm really going to be. I think the, the backcourt's going to be very strong. I do. I Anna Darlington it. and Olivia Salisbury have really earned their stripes. You have Wager, who's basically your basic guard forward type. Yeah, and on the can, wing, yeah. She can play uh, inside if she has to. Um, Kid and I have seen a couple of minutes of, and not I, I haven't seen many of the JV games, but in the couple of seconds that she's gotten into some of the larger varsity wins is uh, Sophia Allen, number 42. She uh, may be a potential big, you know, not necessarily really big. She's 5'7 right now. She's yeah. a junior. But she has a uh, big player yeah, moves. capabilities. Yeah. yeah. She's got to uh, step up. Yep. They're gonna need. They're gonna need. They're gonna need fours and fives. And of course, Kara Santos. Yep. You know, already with a, a pretty nice breakthrough freshman year. Yep. Uh, let's see what a year of like summer ball might help. Right. I know New Hampshire has allowed a lot of yep. the AAU ball all summer long, Mark and Fall. Uh, so they have been playing some. Yes, and in fact, I talked to uh, Caitlin Mollick about that on my uh, podcast I did with her. Here's Viking for a shot, no good. And the rebound is taken away by Sonia Fernandez. You, you know, these kids really missed was the Mass Premier Court Summer Leagues this year, though. Those are, those are great for team building. You yes. know, because you're, you're playing basically with your yeah, with high the players. school teammates. Yeah, yeah. you're going to be playing with them down the road. And you begin to learn... How, what they do and how they do it and how you mesh with them. And that, I think, had something to do with the oh. kind of the disruption in some of the uh, fluidity I've seen in some of the games this year is that maybe if they'd played a little bit more in the summer, they would have had that opportunity to build it. But this has been a crazy year for all of us, and hopefully we won't have to relive this next year. Double dribble. Double dribble is called on Isabella Russell. So with 1.45 left to go, the Hornets are up by nine. Taunton showing some pressure here. And they are going to take uh, Russell out of the game to get a mask on her, because apparently her mask was slipping down a little bit. So Gorman will come in here in her place. She just takes the mask off and <laughs> throws it on her seat. 
Believe me, as calling a hockey game with a mask on yesterday, I, I know exactly how she feels. It is not a fun thing, and I, I really hope these things will be a thing of the past before long. Let's just hope for the best. Kayla Vine gets it up underneath to Sarah Dooling for two. Great pass. And Dooling makes it 42 to 31 with 133 left to go. And if I'm not mistaken, those are Dooling's first two points of the game. You want to see all the so seniors score today. Fernandez takes one from outside, no good. Rebounded by DeRosa. Abby Wager comes away with it and she is fouled by Jalen Fernandez. And we're shooting a one and one, Mark. Abby Wager, of course, has 12 points coming into this. One fifteen left to, I guess, our participation in the girls' season, and I have enjoyed watching these kids. I really have, and Tom, I'm glad you've been with me for this ride. It's been a lot of fun, Mark, to watch these kids play. We've still got a couple of boys' games ahead of us as Abby Wager gets the first. And again, my thanks, too, to everybody at uh, Mansfield Cable Access, and especially our camera person, Maureen O'Neill, who has done a great job on the camera all year, and... Uh, and certainly uh, we've had to get her <laughs> we've had to get her out of uh, her comfort zone and get her down here to these games all the season long and on short notice on short I notice had. because of so many changes in the schedule i mean this has been crazy but my thanks to them for really putting a great effort behind this 101 left to go as Taunton has the ball McDonald launches one no good viking off of her oh. and Abby oh. Wager will get called for the foul on the attempted block on the rebounding no, she can do that. Yes, she can, but <laughs> not that time. Just because you <laughs> think she shouldn't be able to do it, that's her That's her game. Don't anticipate that there's going to be contact. Gorman gets the first of the free throws. 550, 50, I'm sorry. I did that in a boys game last year, too. I'm misreading the clock. 55.2 seconds left to go. Second re is no good and is rebounded by McDonald. Gorman has the ball back again. She will take a push shot, which goes into Wager's hands up ahead to Kayla great, great. Vine. Vine all alone will lay it in. Kayla Vine gets her first basket of this game. Great look for Abby Wager. 32 seconds left, 45-32 Hornets. 27 seconds left. Sailor de Pina gives it off to Ariana Richards. She'll take the three and hits it. Nice shot by Richards. That's her second three of the game. Yeah, I think she's only taken a couple yep, of shots. That's too. it. 15 seconds, 11, 10. Shoot that Prentice. alley. Prentice will take the three. Oh. No good. Comes down to Olivia Gannon in two seconds. One. And that will be it for this game as the Hornet girls take a 45 to 35 victory over the Taunton Tigers. Mansfield improves to eight and four, five and four in the Hockamock League's Kelly Rex division. Tom, uh, teaching moments today, I guess. Yeah, right. I, we saw them uh, attack the two, three zone or the one, two, two zone defense. You know, Hornets missed a lot of shots. Let's be honest about it. They missed a lot of shots. Came out a little slow to start the game. But, you know, outscored Taunton by almost 20 points since early in that game. So. I, I don't really think this one was in doubt much. Uh, once the Hornets uh, kind of took care of business, that was, that was the key. And I also like the, the idea that Taunton can maybe go out of the season. They have one more game tomorrow with the Hornets. But feeling a little bit better about themselves, too. Yeah. Yeah, so, it was good effort. So, for Tom Ferry and for Maureen O'Neill, this is Mark Farinella saying... Thank you so much, everybody, and uh, good afternoon.